Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today we have the Field Company number 8 and the Lancaster number 8. Now I've gotten a couple questions about the Field Company uh, especially because it is one of the most popular number 8s out there right now. Uh, I want to say it's second uh, second most popular because I want to say the most popular has to be Lodge and that being because of how uh, well known Lodge has has become and obviously Lodge has been around for 125 years plus so anyway field company very you know well known uh, it has become one of the elite pans of today and a lot of people like this pan a lot so and I me included as well I like this pan a lot so the Lancaster is newer uh, the field company actually I think started back in 2016 and Lancaster I think was in 2020 so um, anyway Let's talk about these two because I've gotten a lot of questions of these two skillets and I feel like the best comparison for the Field Company number 8 would be the Lancaster. And they both are similar in price, similar in weight, and similar in size. So let's get started. We're going to talk about the Lancaster first and then we'll move on to the Field Company. Alright guys, so as you can see both of them offer leather handle holders So, and they're both from the, from the company itself. And as you can see, they're also, you know, with their logo, very beautiful, very, you know, very thick leather, very robust. And I mean, this thing is heavy duty. Uh, you know, if you, you got a hot skillet, you put this on there to, to move it around, you're definitely not going to burn your hands, guys. So uh, I like this a lot and it feels like this is going to last you a long time. As I mentioned, Lancaster has their own as well. They offer leather goods. They offer wooden spoons as well. Uh, field company as well they offer so many products nowadays that uh, they offer seasoning products um, tea towels and you know you name it they offer all the works for your cooking needs so anyway let's get back to the Lancaster this one is made here in the USA in Pennsylvania Pennsylvania USA as I mentioned it is a number eight and the design itself is very simple but yet very elegant. And not only that, but it's also very reminiscent of vintage cast iron. And the reason I say that is for the almost the straight walls. You know, the walls don't curve up. It's pretty much flat and then you go straight up. So um, the pour spout's also almost reminiscent of, you know, what Wagner or Griswold would, would kind of have. They're very pronounced. And also they, it doesn't have a helper handle. So most modern cast iron skillets nowadays have a helper handle. And to be honest, I kind of like the fact that it doesn't have one. And, and the weight of this actually doesn't need one. You don't need one because it's actually very lightweight. And I want to say it's the lightest modern cast iron skillet that is a number eight. All right, guys, so let's move on to the size. Let's measure this one real quick. So the top rim diameter is 10 and a half inches. The inside cooking surface, we're looking at about nine inches. And the wall height is two inches. The handle length is five inches. So overall, a great size, as I mentioned. It is a number eight, so 10 and a half inch on the top. Let's measure the bottom. Bottom is nine and a half. So performance, this skillet has done so well that I can't complain about it. It's very smooth. There's still a little bit of grain to it. You can hear it. The sidewalls are almost polished though. And also the pour spouts are almost polished as well. There's more texture on the bottom, which I think it does need it there the most because you know, when you're cooking, most of your food is gonna be obviously on the, on the surface itself. And I feel like you need more seasoning on the bottom than you do the sidewalls but it holds seasoning really well it, it heats up really quickly it also cools down a lot quicker than the field company and most of the other cast iron skillets that i own and heating this you know very quickly sears really well um, now most of you might be thinking that since it's so thin and lightweight it might have issues i've used it on a open fire campfire i've used it on a gas stove i've used it on a uh, electric stove um, I've never used it on an induction so I, I don't know for induction guys but 
it, it performed great across all those. I've used it on my grill as well. And there was no issues. It never warped. It's still the same uh, as it was when I bought it brand new. So no issues with the, you know, with it getting warped. So I feel like it, even though it's very thin and lightweight, it's tough. It's not going to break on you. And um, I like this one a lot just for the simple reason that it's just so simple and elegant at the same time. Sometimes the simplicity makes it almost better. As I mentioned, it is personal preference, guys. I feel like the Lancaster is a great competitor and it's a great size. So let's measure the Lancaster. I'm sorry, let's weigh the Lancaster, not measure. And we'll see, and we'll move on to the field company. So the Lancaster weighing in at four pounds, 0.5 ounces. So four pounds technically. All right. Just so you guys can see, four pounds, 0.5 ounces. Very lightweight, as I mentioned. So overall, I feel like this is a great skillet. It retails for 175, and uh, it was 150 a year ago, but they did raise their price recently, and that is obviously due to you know everything that's going on in the world. Either way, I feel like, you know, they do work on this by hand. I know that I've seen Instagram posts and uh, they have family that season the skillets for them. And uh, everybody just kind of helps with their, them, you know, with their business, which to me is awesome. I like that they are a family business. I like that they're a small business. And uh, I like to support small businesses because my wife also has a small business. And, you know, I appreciate all the help we can get. So anyway, great skillet. Overall, the performance has been really well. I've cooked many things on it. I've cooked fish, uh, I've cooked steaks, and they've seared really well. Um, breakfast, you know, cooks really well. Pancakes, no issues whatsoever. So very happy with the performance. As I mentioned, it does heat up a lot quicker and it does cool down a lot quicker. All right, guys, so we're going to move on to the field company. Let's see what this weighs in. So this one, four pounds. Um, pretty much even. Let's see what the field company weighs. All right, guys. So the field company is coming in at four pounds, 5.6 ounces. So a little heavier than the Lancaster. Let's measure the field company skillet r real quick. That way you guys have some dimensions to compare. So the field company comes in at, from the top diameter, 10 inches so it is about a half inch smaller than the Lancaster. The cooking surface is about eight and a half inches on the field company. The wall height is also two inches so it is a tad bit smaller than the Lancaster even though they both claim to be number eights the field company is a little bit smaller than the Lancaster. So that is something to consider. So the field company, as you can see, also very nice leather handle holder. Also high quality. And as you can see, I've used mine, so it's, it is beat up, but it has held up, you know, and it's gotten burnt a little bit here and there, but great, um, great product. I like it a lot. Field company did spend a lot of time on the uh, handle design and by far it is the most comfortable handle that I've ever felt you know on a cast iron skillet very comfortable and I like it a lot it's just very ergonomical it, you know it just your hands wrap around it really well and then the weight as well is very um, well placed you know the displacement of the weight uh, causes it to be comfortable it's not you know hard to hold um, the helper handle very small almost you know non-existent but still a great addition you don't need it especially on the eight but i do like that it's there it gives it a nice aesthetic i like the looks of it the other thing that um is different from this one to the lancaster is the fact that this one doesn't have any pour spouts instead they have the lip design as you can see here you know a very um prominent lip design um when you pour i've done gravy and i poured onto my country fried steak um, it does t tend to drip on the side, but it's not very bad. You know, it's not like it's horrible and it just 
plops or hangs on to the side. No, it actually drips down. And then you get, you know, once you tilt it back, and then it starts to drip onto the side. So it works really well, and I do like it a lot. Now the inside also has been uh, machined, but this one actually has a lot more texture on it. And uh, to be honest, I like that a lot because when you have a skillet that's super polished, sometimes the seasoning is really hard to, to you know, hold on to the skillet. Field Company has never given me any issues with the seasoning. It has never flaked, has never been just completely damaged. Um, after cooking something, you know, if I cook on it and the seasoning looks a little bad, one round of seasoning after that, it looks like it was brand new, like it never happened. So as I mentioned, easy to maintain, easy, you know, to season, no issues like some other companies. And I like that a lot. Now, you don't have to be seasoning in the oven all the time or stovetop. You know, honestly, the more you cook on it, the better it gets. And it's true. A lot of people say that. And it is true. I don't, I can't complain about it because it's cooked so well that uh, I remember my first skillet, which was a field company number 10 and a field company number six. Those were my first skillets that I got from field company because they sold them in, um, in a set. And I remember when I first cooked on them, I was blown away because uh, just cooking with it was just a breeze, you know, or cooked and crisped really well. I it was just completely a different experience cooking on a machined surface compared to, you know, the traditional lodge surface. That's not to say that lodge is bad. Lodge cooks really well as well. So I'm not going to bash on lodge because I love lodge. But anyway, I was, you know, pretty uh, impressed by the way they cook. Uh, this one and the Lancaster, they both cook really well. But one thing is that this one does have a thicker bottom, so it does take a little bit longer to heat up. But once you get it to the temperature that you want it at, it maintains that temperature really well. The Lancaster, once you turn off the, you know, the gas or you turn off the burner, um, it does tend to cool down a lot quicker. This one still maintains its heat. So if you have some food and you want it to maintain it warm, actually I didn't talk about the lid, but there is no lid for the Lancaster at the moment. So the field company does offer lids, which is a very nice benefit. Especially as I mentioned, if you want to keep your food warm, that's going to keep it warm. Or if you want to use it to steam some veggies, that's going to work great. So that is actually one of the, I guess you could say, one of the cons of the Lancaster that they don't have a lid for it yet. But I do want to say that they're possibly in the works for lids. I know they're making a number 10 as well. So um, right now I want to say they're just in the in the process of getting that squared away. But anyway, moving back to the field company, as I mentioned, this one is actually a Kickstarter version um, because it does have the Wheatcrest logo. So if you buy a new one, it's not going to look like this. Now, I actually have two of these. I have the, you know, the one that's currently being sold. And that was actually my first uh, number eight. This one is my second number eight. So this one I got on eBay. And uh, I was, you know, once I saw it, I was like, I, I, I had to pick it up because I've been wanting one with a Wheatcrest logo. They are hard to come by, and uh, the seller actually sold it for a very decent price. Nothing too extravagant. It was actually $80 compared to, if I was to buy a new number 8, it was going to be 150 So for the price, I felt like I, it, it was a great um, investment. And that's the thing about cast iron as well. Cast iron is an investment. It is expensive, uh, especially if you go with the Elite Pans, which are, you know, milled. Um, they're polished, they're seasoned by hand, some some of them are poured by hand um, versus the Lodge where, you know, it's mostly machine made. But um, Lodge, like I mentioned, has a special place in my heart. I love Lodge and uh, I will never talk bad about them. They have great products and they've lasted for over 125 years for a reason. So anyway, let's move back to these two. So if you were to choose one, I think that ultimately... It comes down to several things. Weight, which Lancaster is the lightest. Um, heat retention, which field company is better at it. The accessories, field company has more. Field company also has different sizes, uh, many sizes available. They also have lids and seasoning products. So you name it, they also have Dutch ovens many many items uh 
Lancaster at the moment, I think, is only selling just the skillet, the number eight. I know, as I mentioned, they're making a number 10. They're coming out with other products as well. I did actually uh, talk to them on Instagram and they did mention that they have other um, products in, in production. So they're going to announce that pretty soon. But if you're just basically looking at the skillet itself, they're both great. The only downside to the Lancaster is the fact that they don't offer a lid. But um, other than that, they both cook really well. They're both made here in the USA. I want to say this one's made in Michigan from what I understand. Uh, this one, like I mentioned, made in Pennsylvania. So either way, you're going to be supporting companies here that are from the USA. So for me, that's a win anyway. So whatever one you go for, I think you're going to be impressed whether you go for this one, which retails for 175 or you go for the field company that retails a little bit less than this one. But um, like I mentioned, both are great comparisons. And ultimately, if you want more cooking surface, the Lancaster is bigger. And if you want pour spouts, like, you know, you want actual pour spouts, then the Lancaster is the way to go. But as I mentioned, like, what are your preferences? That's ultimately what it's going to go down to. Um, so I hope this, you know, is informative for you guys. I hope this helps you guys out. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. Now, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, I appreciate your time. Thank you guys for watching.